So here's a little tutorial about how do you bank um, off of two walls when you're doing these reflections and how do you calculate this? So if you see where the golf ball is positioned here um, at the start, and this is my golf hole, clearly I cannot uh, from the golf ball just hit it straight there into the golf hole because I have two walls in my way. So now I can, I got to bank off um, some walls. Now, it is possible that I could probably bank off of this wall somewhere and then bank it into the hole that way. Um, but who knows, you could have another obstacle maybe that's somewhere uh, in, in, in the way, so you could do that. Um, as you design your own golf hole, you could probably put an obstacle in there if you wanted to. But let's just say in general that uh, in general, if I'm going to do two banks, I'd probably bank it somewhere off of here which should then go there and then probably go somewhere in the hole. So that means that I have to first bank off the top wall and then bank off this wall here on the right side. So I've got, um, I've basically got uh, wall one here and then I've got um, the second bank there too. And what happens is, is when we do this is we actually have to work backwards for our miniature golf reflections. So I'm going to get rid of the yellow lines here because we're going to actually replace them with the real um, reflections that you see here. So um, so first of all, to start off, um, I see that um, here I am three units away from that wall. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to put my reflection point here. I'm going to make a dot here and I'm three units away. So I've done the reflection, pretty simple reflection. Now, um, like we did earlier in the year, if I need to reflect over wall one, I visually have to basically extend that wall out and then I need to reflect over that wall. So now I need to count the number of units uh, that I have here from the blue point to the line. So I gotta count those units and it looks like Let's see, two, four, six, eight units. So that means I need to go eight units up from that point as well. So two, four, six, eight. Oh, that's way up at the top. Okay, so that's right at the top of our screen. So now to draw my reflection line, I need to go from the second point and go back to the original golf hole which will get me right about there. And notice I hit where I hit. I hit really early um, here. I happened to hit really early where that miniature golf hole. So I had to bank it that early. And then from that star that I've placed there, I need to go to the second point. And then you see where that hits. That hits right there where that star is. And then finally, I need to um, draw that line. So the actual reflection here that we're working with uh, would be this line here to this line here to this line here. And this would be my hole-in-one route. And then to find the hole-in-one route, basically um, what I need to do here as I look at those pieces here, if I'm looking at the hole-in-one route, uh, I'll just make this a little bolder with these pieces here. I need to find um, the lengths of those pieces. So uh, to do that, you can do the simple distance formula. So here, kind of make some right triangles. This one's kind of nice down here in the bottom corner by the golf hole. Um, because it hits pretty close on a the line there. Um, the one that's going to require you to do a little bit of calculation in this case would to be for number, to be the, the big length here is like that I'm drawing in blue. This would take a little bit more work, um, but it shouldn't be that bad. If we look at some distances here, let's see, this looks like it would be roughly about one, two, three and a half. So I'd say that this is 3.5. And my height here is about two. Um, and then the little triangle down here in the corner, I'll take that as well. 
that has a little height down here of two and the distance here is three. So I've got some easy calculations for the big one here. Let's see here, I got a count uh, counting from the right upper right hand corner, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 and a half roughly. So you go 12.5 there and then two, four, six, so I would say that big triangle is six there. So when I'm looking at my calculations now um, to do my um, to do my distance formula stuff, so we'll just uh, we'll say this is triangle A. We'll do triangle A, triangle B, and triangle C. So if you're calculating triangle A, we got to do two squared plus three point five squared to find its distance. Do the big triangle, 6 squared plus 12 and a half squared. And we'll have to take the square root of that as well to find our distances. And then the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. Once again, remember that this, these calculations are estimates. They are not uh, exact, um, but we are basically trying to uh, give a rough estimate of what the distance would be for traveling. Uh, this would be 3.6. Oops, and I ran off the screen here. So, so this would be 3.6 roughly. Um, 6 squared plus 12.5 squared would be about 13.8 roughly. You could probably argue 13.9 if you're rounding to the tenth. 2 squared plus 3.5 squared. And taking the square root of that is right around 4.03. So we'll just say 4 flat. And then I would just add up these. So my final value for my distance here at the very end, um, 4 plus 13.8 plus 3.6 would give me a total distance of 21.4 feet for that hole-in-one route that we're talking about for this for this big hole in one round that I'm highlighting right here, we would say that that would be 21.4 feet. Um, if you got questions, feel free to ask us um, as we go through it and, and help you out um, as you plan your designs and that um, and those types of things. So uh, once again, happy planning.